Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Shawnee. And this is Rosie. And welcome to Not, Not Your average, average Church Girl Podcast. Podcast. With a Z. With a Z. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Every, hello to the world. Hello, world. We are global, sis. We are global, sis. Hi, global. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who listens to this podcast and other countries. We appreciate you. We see you, and we thank you from the bottom of our heart. We thank you, thank, thank you, so thank much. you. Yes, yes. And, of course, to everyone in the state, we thank you, and we appreciate you as well. How are you doing today, sis? I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? I can't complain. I mean, let me let me take that back. Let me take that back. I could complain. I have a lot of things that I could complain about, but I choose not to complain. My old neighbor, Miss Loretta, God rest her soul, used to say, "No use complaining. No one's listening anyway." Well, sometimes a lot of people are listening, but most people can't do anything about it. That's the thing. I find that you can, you will find people who will listen, but most people have their own problems, and they wish they could help you, but, you know, they or sometimes they can help you, but they can't help you all the time. You understand what I mean? For example, if you're going through a financial situation, somebody may bless you once or twice, but they can't continually bless you every single day. They can give you $100 a day. Exactly. Or pay your bills for you in full every month. So... You know, life is life. Life is lifing, and it's not just lifing for me. So, you know, just got to keep believing God, keep trusting God, keep walking by faith, and just keep doing what we're doing. So tell the good people out there, what is our topic for this week? Well, good people out there, I just realized today was Ministry Appreciation Month. In October. Wow. So we're going to talk about appreciating your ministry. Now, ministry is not just preaching. No, it's not. Ministry could be missionary work. Ministry could be music. Ministry could be praying for someone. Yes. Ministry could be a lot of different things. Ministry could be ushering. Ministry could be sending out text messages to people who you have not seen in church for a while. Ministry could be sending out cards. I know a couple in our church, their ministry is they send out birthday cards or different cards for holidays. All the time. That All is the time that, to that, that is their ministry. That's what they do. Um, mm-hmm. Ministry is whatever God has placed in your heart for the kingdom of God. It's whatever God has placed in your heart to be able to serve his people. Because that's what we are all here for. We are all here to be servants, you know, regardless yeah. whether you're a minister, meaning like you're a preacher, whether you're a uh, uh, um, usher. My thing is whatever you do, just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Yes, and don't think if someone has ministry, it does not mean pulpit. No, it, it ministry so it, is a, absolutely not. My ministry, honestly, if I can be honest, I feel like my ministry is not even in the church. <laughs> honestly, I feel like my ministry is out in the streets. Like my ministry, my online ministry to me has been more impactful than my, what would I consider my Offline ministry to be, I guess, offline ministry, yes. Not that people in my church don't like to hear me pray or don't like to hear me preach. Not that because I've had a lot of people who tell me they miss hearing me. However, I know for a fact that I'm being used and and making an impact and a greater impact online. Of course, because, number one, online you can reach however many people. God wants you to reach. Everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, almost everybody. Some people are all free, but you can reach almost everybody. Absolutely. And you, ha- you also have to know in ministry, ministry is 
a thankless job, regardless of what kind of ministry you're in. It's not that always is absolutely correct. You're not going to always have people patting you on your back. You're not always going to have people telling you, oh, you did such an awesome job. Or you're so See, I knew what I told a minister in our church recently. Oh, he's actually an elder. And I said to him, I said, you know what? I need you to know this. Regardless of how good you think you can preach or you can pray, I guarantee you this, and I mean this with my full chest, I don't care how well you think you can teach, how well you think you can preach, how well you think you can pray, how well you think you can sing, usher, cook, or whatever it is that you think you whatever can do. Whatever it is that you think you can do. Trust me when I tell you, there's somebody out there in the world that will tell you that you absolutely suck. Yes. You suck. You suck. You suck. I'm telling you. <laughs> so I tell people that so they can be humble. Because no matter how great you think you are, <laughs> trust me, there is somebody out there that will hurt your feelings and tell you that you absolutely suck. As a matter of fact, I just saw on Threads, I think it was yesterday, um, um, I think it was yesterday. What? Are you hearing some noise? I'm typing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I know I hear, I'm hearing like a tapping noise. Yes, because during our episodes, I often take notes so that we can refer back to them. But if my typing's too loud, I'm going to stop. Now, I just didn't know what it was. And I was like, well, what is this I'm hearing? Um... It's me, it's me. I'm typing. Um, I forgot my train of thought of what I was saying. Um anyway, getting back to ministry. Oh, I was looking on thread and someone put a question of what which artist that's out here that you think just pretty much like they they suck at singing. And someone oh. and someone says, you know, they didn't put it like that, but pretty much saying that they they are horrible at singing. And all of them, I I automatically knew the first person people were going to, a lot of people were going to say in the in the comments. I just knew it because people give this young lady a lot of hate for, a, I don't know why, but a lot of hate. I knew Jennifer Lopez was going to be uh, one of the names that was going to be. Well, let's just I, I will say this. Jennifer Lopez is not necessarily a singer as much as she is an entertainer. Absolutely. So she was She's in that. Blue. She was in I'm that. I'm sorry, y'all. She was in that category. I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised by this name either. Beyonce was in this. Um, because no matter how fantastic a lot of people think she is, there's a lot of other people who does not think she's as fantastic as other people think she is. Um, so she, her name was a lot. Taylor Swift was another person, but Mary J. Lodge was a person. Like, was, like these are people. Like numerous people were seeing these names. Um, someone said there are and I, some people. They're going to they just. I don't know what it is. I think they are just professional haters. Right, because somebody right. said I said this name. Two names that really really surprised me. The first name was Alicia Keys. I was like, wait, what? Because I thought she could really sing. I, I feel that way. And then the second person was Whitney Houston. I was so shocked to hear somebody put Whitney Houston name in that category. And then what I'm coming to find out is a lot of people don't think that Jennifer Hudson can sing. And I'm like, what? Like, so, it, so my point of saying all of this is. Hey, nobody did nothing. Stop. I'm sorry, y'all. My so, cat is really being extra right now. I don't know why. So my point of saying all of this is that you may have a preference of thinking someone is fantastic or awesome as something, and someone else can think, oh, they are, they suck at that. I do not enjoy them. I think they yell too much or they scream too much or uh, they don't they don't know how to hold a, 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 a um what is that a tune or a note or whatever the case may be. So my point is. Don't think of yourself so highly. Keep keep a humble spirit because <laughs> somebody will hurt your feelings. Someone really will hurt your feelings. 
Someone yeah, said to you have to be able to separate people that genuinely don't like you from haters. From hate and, there, and there's a big and there's a big, big difference. A huge difference. Um I remember someone said to me, now if don't people who really know me know that I have no rhythm. Meaning I, I can't clap on on beat. I can't sway correctly. I, I don't have I can't sing. I, I literally like I know people are you can do all things through no, God has not given me that gift <laughs> at all. At all to do those things. I can't I can't, I can't dance. I was never I a dancer. I try. I try, but, but I'm not good at those things. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not good at any of those things. No one's ever going to choose me to, to lead praise and worship. No one's ever going to choose me to do a solo in church. I, I recognize those are not my gifts. Um, okay. And, 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 and that's okay. That's okay. You have to know what your gift is and cultivate your gift. So I'm quite sure Rhody has a lot of gifts. She can sing. Um, she can write. Um, what What are some of your other gifts? Um, I sing, I write, I dance, I do sports. Um, I'm very good at cooking. I can sew. I can crochet. I can talk about a lot of different subjects and actually know what I'm talking about. But you have amazing gifts. You are ministering to people. And that's beautiful because the main thought of the podcast was 99% Shaniqua. And she does a lot of the work. So if you're hearing the podcast, whether you're in Sydney or whether you're just in Newcastle County, you thank her for that because I didn't have a lot to do with any of that. I mean, I do take notes and I bring my voice to the podcast, but the majority of the work is her. Well, <clears throat> I always look at things like this when you're in a team. There's no I in team. I'm giving credit where credit is due. I appreciate that. Um but also for our situation, we're both in we're, we're in similar situations, but we're in different situations as well. Rody works, I do not. So whereas she may not have the time to dedicate and devote to, you know, doing everything for the podcast, I can kind of work my schedule because I'm at home. And do those things. Um, it's all about, and this is a ministry. Speaking of, this is a ministry for us. Um, because when we do this, we're hoping that maybe if someone is discouraged or depressed or down, that maybe we can say something that can uplift your spirit, that can make you laugh, that can put a smile on your face. Or maybe we can teach you something that may, maybe you never knew before. Or maybe you can, you know, hear, hear our stories or hear our testimonies and see yourself in our testimony. It's like, oh, my God, I'm not alone. Someone else understands what I'm going through. Someone else understands how I'm feeling and what I've experienced. So this podcast so is a ministry. going through something, you think you're the only one. The only one, and you're and, and you're not, and you trust me when I tell you. At the time, and I like to use this phrase all the time. So, uh, there's a deacon in my church that laughs at me. I always say, God, you ghosted me, because sometimes I really do feel like God has. I know what the Word of God says. I know what it says. However, when I'm going through my situations. There are times where I feel like God has ghosted me. Waiting is not easy, no matter what Wait, anyone tells you. Waiting is being in the waiting. I love to call it the waiting room. Being in the waiting room is not easy at all. Waiting for that yes is not easy. Waiting for your healing is not easy. 
waiting for your deliverance or for your breakthrough or whatever it is. Maybe it's for that husband or for your or for your wife. Maybe it's or for maybe you're waiting for your business to take off. Yeah, listen, listen. Le- yes, yes. I'm in the waiting room for that. Or for your ministry to take off. I'm in the waiting room for that. Or maybe you're waiting for your child to come out of sin, whatever kind of sin he or she may be involved in. Maybe you're waiting because you've been praying. And Mike, I said this, I think, in one of our other episodes. Um, this guy had given his life over to Christ. And his wife said, I have been praying for this for 66 years. That's a long time. A long, too about long suffering? That's a long suffering situation. Because most people end up giving up. Most people are not going to be consistent enough to continue to pray for something for that long. Most people are going to give up because they're going to think it's not God's will. They're going to think. And that's an easy, that's an easy street to go down. A- absolutely. Absolutely. And people will say, well, how could you give up? Because so-and-so in the Bible didn't give up. Well... You're not that person. You're not them. And I'll just say that that's excellent wording. You're not them. And you're not, and you're not, you're not Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have been praying for something for years, it may not even be for you. Let's say you're praying. Let's say you have a neighbor that's been sick. Yeah. You've been praying, Lord, please let that neighbor get well. And it seems like every time you turn around, there's a nurse at the neighbor's house. And you say, well, Lord, please, I believe it for healing. What is going on? And don't think you're just going to get this great answer in your, oh, he tells you. No, Mm-mm. that's not how it works. Absolutely. You're going to be frustrated sometimes. You're going to be frustrated a lot. A lot. Because- Waiting on God can be a very frustrating situation. I know some people out there may not like that, that we're using that word frustrating. Oh, you're not supposed to be frustrated waiting on God. You're supposed to be prayed up and, and supposed to be praising him. And, and I know all of that. And you could be doing all of that. You could be doing all of that, but you, the human side of you, because we still have the human side of us, can still become frustrated. And when you see, when you, you don't. You could be running around the church. You, you could be running around the church seven times for the first year that you're praying for whatever it is. But every day or year that goes by, you're like, huh. Yep. And you try to remind yourself of what we said before. There are people that have waited for years for a promise or a situation to clear up. And it just seems like everybody has come from behind you, past you, and they're living their best life while you're still counting pennies at the Dollar Tree. Yep, 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 absolutely. But also, while we're in the waiting room, we have to take accountability. Sometimes we don't take accountability for situations. For example, I'll give you a perfect example. Say like you're someone that says, oh, I'm going through financially, right? I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. My light bill is past due. My card note is past due, right? Okay. And you're praying to God. And you're praying to God. But when you do get money or you get extra money, instead of you having your priorities straight, maybe you're going to Starbucks. And, and, have, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself every once in a while. But sometimes when you know you're in the thicket of a situation and your back is against the wall, sometimes you have to deny yourself that Starbucks. Sometimes you have to no, you have to deny that. yourself that, that, that Dunkin' Donuts or that McDonald's. Because those who you may think, oh, it's only $5, it's only five ninety nine, it's only $6.00. If you go to these places every day, don't five dollars or three dollars or two fifty that you think doesn't mean anything. It's adding up, and th- that's money that you could have been putting towards your light bill or towards your gas tank or towards your car payment. Sometimes we don't think about stuff like that. We're like, God, my finances not changing, 
But your finances is not changing because your way of thinking and your way of handling your finances are not changing. Well, like she said, there's nothing wrong with a treat every now and again. There's nothing. There's Listen, there's nothing wrong with she, My mom believes that you should treat yourself. She said, I don't care if I get a check once a month. Yes, I'm going to pay my bills, but trust and believe I'm going to spend something on me. I'm going to get something out of the deal. That's how she believes. And I, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. I'm just not there yet. Now, don't get me wrong. You should pay your bills first. You should take something out for the church first. Yes. But I also agree with Ms. Ruby, and we love her. <laughs> <laughs> If I want to give myself a donut, I'm going to give myself a donut. And not only because your mama said that, because I was talking to a credit counselor once years ago, trying to get my credit back together. And they said, take something out for yourself. Of course, they told me, like a reputable person should, write down every bill you have, Mm-hmm. Even if it's just like, let's say you go get a bottle of water from Wawa every day. She said, write down every right. single thing. Absolutely, you absolutely. But she also said, make sure you take out maybe five dollars a week for yourself. And her rationale behind this was, if you always only pay your bills, she has seen a lot of people kind of snap <laughs> and say, I'm done. Absolutely. I pay bills all absolutely. the time. That's all I ever do. I'm sick and tired of paying bills. I'm not going to pay no more. Absolutely. You haven't allowed yourself to have any any freedom. Now, people, you know, $5 may mean a lot for some of our listeners. It may not mean anything because you may have your finances that are just as well. But, yes, pay your bills. Pay your tithes. But please do something for yourself because, like you said, you keep paying, paying, paying. You're like, I'm paying everyone else, and I don't have any money for myself. I'm I, done. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. And that's just like someone who said, oh, I'm on a diet. And they get on a strict diet, and they never allow themselves to have a treat. Even not on even a if, lifesaver. Right, not even on a Saturday or a Sunday or anything. They refuse to allow themselves to have a treat. And then next thing you know, it becomes too much for them. And, and next thing you know, they're back to their old ways. Because some and things no. are not sustainable for some people. So you have to do what's sustainable for you and your situation. So I would just say sometimes we're praying for God to change situations around in our lives, and God is like, I need you to change your way of thinking first. Because yes. I, 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 can, I can bless you with finances. I can bless you with money. But if you don't change your way of thinking, if you don't change your way of spending, you're going to be in this situation in the next three months. Even if I bless you about her, think about it. There's some people God can bless them right now. I've seen this. I saw this video where somebody asked people, if you were to get a million dollars right now, what would you, what would be the first thing you do? You know what a lot of people say? Oh, I'm going to go buy me a Bentley. Or mind you, so now half of your money, mind you, they didn't think about taxes. Most of your money. They didn't think about taxes. So you get in a Bentley, half of your money is gone because you want to pay at least, I'm going to say at least $500,000 for that Bentley. It could be and under sure. or it could be above. So you already, yeah, you already down to $500,000. Plus insurance. Absolutely. And all, everything else that you have coming on. So, so you can't go to AutoZone for those breaks. You listen, the absolutely. There's no saying, oh, my homeboy can fix stuff. <laughs> no, they can't touch that. <laughs> so my thing is sometimes we, we're waiting for God to do certain things, and God is like, but I'm waiting for you to change your ways. I need you to change. In order for me to bless you, I need you to change your way of doing things. I need you to change. For example, you say, God, I need you to heal me of high blood pressure. God is like, healing is already in your body, but it's not coming forth because you're not doing the things to allow the healing to come forth. 
You're still going to Popeye's every chance you get. Absolutely. You're still eating the sauce and vinegar potatoes every night before bed. You're still. You know, I still like those on a side bar. I used to really. I, 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 I still like them, but I don't eat them like that because I don't want my anything happen. Like Popeye's. I love Popeye's, but guess what? I don't eat Popeye's that often any longer because I know that for me, if I eat Popeye's often, and often meaning like Cynic, if I get it this weekend and then get it next weekend, it really does impact my blood my blood pressure. And I know and I know this for a fact that if I eat Popeye's too often for me, it it absolutely impacts my blood pressure. So for me, I've learned since I've learned that I had to be more become more conscious of it. Even when I have a strong craving and really want that Popeyes, I deny myself because I had to realize I'd rather live and be here for my daughter and my dogs and my mom and my nieces and nephew and my other family and friends than to be sitting here indulging in a piece of Popeyes chicken. So my point is. Sometimes we're asking God for things, and God is like, I've already equipped you with these things, but the thing, it can't come forth until you make the change that you, that you need to make. So talking about ministry, ministry, we always think ministry, like Rody said earlier, is the pulpit, is the four walls of the church. No. Ministry is, you, sometimes ministry is you seeing somebody, and they have a frown on their face, and you just walk past them. You don't say anything, but you just smile at them, at that person. Sometimes you don't know how your smile can completely change someone's outlook, someone's attitude. Or you say, Go, good morning, how are you today? Or maybe something as simple as you holding the door open for someone. Just show an act of kindness. Because the Bible says to go out to the hedges and the highways. Absolutely. It never told you to stay in the building. Now, don't get me wrong. Some ministers, the, the church building, that is their platform. Absolutely. Some ministers outside talking to the homeless and the troubled of this world, that's their ministry. Absolutely. And then you have, and then you have, other, then you have others of, of us that just stay on the Internet. <laughs> And it's not that it's not that those groups can't intertwine or even change places from time to time. But their primary part, yours is in the church, yours is at the homeless shelter, yours is at the women's group, whatever the case may be. Absolutely. So you have to learn to appreciate each ministry. You can't say my way is the only way. Absolutely. Bishop Patterson said before Bishop Patterson, I love him. Um, I, I do too. He, he was this when he was growing up, there were people that truly believed if they didn't go to his church or one of their church's denominations that they weren't really saved. No, Brody, there's people I know for a fact that believe that about our organization, that believe that our organization was only people going to heaven. Mm. Like, for real, for real. You like, know that's not true, right? Like, for, like for real, for real. Like, and it just made me look at the person with the side eye, like, wait, what? You know there were twelve tribes of Israel, right? Did, did you did you really believe? Like, wait, what? So it, it it's amazing what people. And my thing is, if God gives you a certain ministry, just because God has given you that ministry doesn't give you the right to dump on someone else's ministry. Okay, maybe maybe God maybe God called you to be a a missionary, but a foreign missionary. So God has called you to go to Dominican Republic. He has called you to go to Argentina or Peru or go to Israel or go to certain parts of South Africa or to the continent of Asia or go to Europe or different places, Portugal, and different places. And just because God has called you to be able to do those things and reach people in different countries in that way, don't look down on someone like me who may use my my fingers and the writing and the things that God gave me to say to impact people through the Internet. Because you're physically doing it, and I'm not physically doing it, but I'm doing it behind a computer screen. Don't try to downgrade what I do and 
try to make what I seem like what I do is meaningless. Because first of all, everybody can't go to church, and everyone is not is not equipped to be a foreign missionary. Everyone. And what Shaniqua is doing is helping those, like I just said. What if you have somebody who's confined to the bed? Absolutely. And and her ministry is the only one they can hear. Or what if you have somebody who maybe they're in a bad relationship and somebody's telling them you better not listen, go to church X, Y, and Z, and they have to speak and listen to Shaniqua with words of encouragement on their lunch break at work. At, 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 like absolutely, like wow, absolutely. You just don't know. You just you yeah. just don't know. Honestly, I've had people tell me, send me messages saying, I don't even know how I came across your prayer, or I don't even know how I came across your video. I had this man to tell me his wife was had cancer. He said, I don't even know how your video popped up on my phone. He said, I wasn't even looking at my phone, and your video popped up on my phone, and I was like, what is, who is this? And he pressed play, and he said, thank you. You have no idea how much I needed to hear that. I don't know how you got it on my phone, but I'm glad you did because I needed to hear that because my wife is going through cancer, and it's hard. It is hard as her husband. I've had, I've gotten a couple of messages like that. So you just don't know in your ministry who you may impact. Because like I said earlier, everyone is not going to come back and tell you how you have impacted their lives. No, but, they're not. Like and I, somebody, they might not be, you know, they either they won't or they can't. Or they can't. And then there's going to be some people who watches your stuff, for example, say like if you're, you're a person who has an online ministry like I do. There are some people who's going to watch your stuff, read your stuff all the time, but they're never going to like your stuff. They're never oh. going to comment on your stuff. Because it's not the people who like your comments. It's the people that don't. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, like, there's going to be people, if, you're, if your ministry is in the church, maybe you're a pastor or elder, you're, whatever, you have a church, you have a congregation, and you may have people that come and sit in the pew every Sunday, but they never come up to you and, and say, Pastor, how are you doing? They may never come up to you and shake your hand. They may never come up to you and say, I'm praying for you. They may never come up to you and say, Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Thank you for how you have brought me. They may not, they may never do that. So what you have to do is keep your focus on God and your focus on why you're doing this. Even me, I'm being honest with you. That's what keeps me going because I realize I'm doing this because of God. I'm doing this because of this is the calling that God has on my life. I love doing it. Like, I love my online ministry. And I realize I do give my online ministry a lot more attention than I do my offline ministry or my church ministry because, for example, I go through it. Rody knows this. I go through a lot in my body. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times I may not be able to attend services. But even if I'm unable to physically attend services, although I get on our phone line, when it comes to my online ministry, I can still reach people regardless of what I'm going through in my body, if that makes any sense. Of course. So I love I love my online ministry, and even in my online ministry, God has allowed me to, get, to have this sisterhood, this community of especially women who have been pretty much rocking with me ever since 2018. And we have formed a, actually a bond where we know we have never met each other in person, but we, we, we talk and we pray for one another. It's not me just always, they're, they're always coming to me and saying, I need you to pray for me. I need you. Sometimes I tell them, listen, I'm going through this. I may not go as in details as I, as I would with Rhodey, but I'm like, da-da-da, would you just please say a prayer for me? 
And like I said earlier, there's a lot of people who, who's been following me who never interact with me. They, I, but I can see that they're looking at my stuff, but they never interact. And that's fine, too. That is fine, too. God said to me maybe a couple of years ago, I, I, listen, I used to be the queen of block. You say something smart to me, I'm blocking you. You are not going to disturb my peace on my page, on my platform. That's not going to happen. So I will block you. God told me to stop blocking people. He had always told me that I could not respond back to people. Like, no matter what they said back, awful to me, I could not respond back to them. And then he told me to stop blocking them. He said, because if I, if I stop blocking them, they're still going to come and read my post. They're still going to come and watch my videos. So that way, the word is still getting down in their spirit. The words of encouragement is still getting down in their spirit where, that sounds like me. where they can become transformed and more like Christ. And, of course, you know, the human side of you, you're like, fuck that. But, <laughs> but the, 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 the spiritual side of you, you have to be humble to God and be obedient to what God is saying to you. So that's what I do. I don't block people any longer. However, if you do say something disrespectful to me, I will I will hide your response. And I will mute you where even when you respond, I will not see your response. And now that I will do, and God has not told me I could not do that. So I think I'm good. I think you're good. Yeah, good. Because so, I, I am quick like, oh, okay, bye. You're right, because people will try to disturb your your spirit. They'll try to disturb your peace. There, like so many people out here are suicidal because of something someone that they don't even know or have a relationship with have said something derogatory t- towards them. And it's so sad because Shaniqua knows we're, you know, within the same age range. When we were growing up, of course, people talked about everybody. Absolutely. But we could handle it better yes. because we didn't have a system of my mom, dad, grandma, whoever said I was perfect and I can handle criticism a lot better. A lot of people in this generation, I just look at them and sometimes I'm just speechless. They can't handle They can't but but it goes back to what the Bible says. Each generation they're gonna be weaker or wiser. Okay, wiser. And only in certain regards. Only in certain (laughs) I, when I say certain regards, I mean like maybe like social media that regard. Okay. Um, sometimes you ask these children like basic questions. Oh no no no! Kids. I'm not talking about basic life stuff. I'm thinking maybe like um, technology wise or like social media wise. I think they may be wiser in that, but I I feel like that's for me personally. You know, for me, I feel like from from the interactions I've had. That's where it st- that's where the buck stops, honestly. And like you said, they can't handle any type of criticism, whether it's yeah. constructive criticism or not. You could even say um, something that's helpful to them. Say, you know, maybe you shouldn't use so much lip gloss. Right. It's making your it's making your lips look way too shiny. They will call a therapist. Now, I'm telling Absolutely. you, you're a therapist out there, this is your time, because these kids call everything. Absolutely. They, you know, oh, you know, maybe that lip gloss is not the right color for you. And it could be somebody that they love and respect. Absolutely. Maybe tell them something that they don't like, and they just, <gasps> and my feelings, and so and so and so. Y'all would have died. You would have absolutely died. Listen, with my you couldn't have grown up with my mom, because my mom has no filter. Listen, one time my mom came to visit our church. I don't know if Rody was there this Sunday. My mom, I don't think I was. And they, they t- ask, put my mom on a microphone. My mom said, before you could come after me, you need to clean up around your own front door. I'm like, wait, somebody get the mic from her. Grab the mic now. Like, what, lady, what are you doing? So, so. This lady, is, and she has calmed down a lot. Once I got saved, she calmed down a lot. But back in the day, she was a force to be reckoned with, like no lie to you, a force to be reckoned with. Like, oh. 
And if anybody out there is in that younger generation, like 25 and younger, we're not trying to be mean to you. We just had a lot more real life to deal with. Yes, yes, yes. Because what you all see, you know, you might call us boomers or whatever, I don't know. But you say, well, why should we have to go through things that you had to go through? It made it, we didn't love it. I'll tell you that right now. Absolutely. We're a lot stronger because... Absolutely. Absolutely. Your boss may not always agree with you. Heck, your best friend may not always agree with you. And you can't always fall out on the floor crying because somebody told you they don't like what you did or what you said or what you wore. Like Shanique said a little bit earlier, there are some people that are not going to like you regardless of what you do. Absolutely. I mean, I mean that some people are really going to tell you in, in your face, you suck. In your face? You and suck. They will, not, they will not think anything of it. But this generation, like, <laughs> instead of you just saying, I'm not talking to them anymore, y'all want to have um, a prayer session, an all-night prayer session, because somebody told you they didn't like you. Or, matter of fact, or because, I just, matter of fact, I just saw this on Threads. This young lady said, I'm about to leave my church that I've been a member of, I forgot how many years, because the pastor said something that offended me. So someone said, was it the pastor that offended you, or was it the Holy Spirit that was convicting you? Because there's clearly a difference. There's a difference. There is a difference. Because sometimes we say we're offended because it's the pastor saying this, the pastor. And it's really not the pastor that's offended us. It's the Holy Spirit that's trying to convict us and bring us out of sin. And that and if somebody's telling you, hey, you can't dress like sexy red. And I know some of you know who that, I guess she's a rabbi. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you can't, yes, the Bible says come as you are. Does the Bible actually say come as you are? It does not. Oh, it, I, it, it does not say, I don't believe it, because I looked that up, and I don't believe it says it like that. But I believe when I researched it, it was not even talking about um it's actually not even talking about clothing. It's talking about your spiritual man. You know how people say, maybe you never heard this, I used to hear this all the time. I'm gonna go to church where I get myself together. Yeah, God I've is heard it God times. Okay, so God is saying, Come as you are, like come I want you to come dirty. I want you to come messed up. I want, I want to come broke. Yes, or high, or where you or feel like you out of out of out, you're out of out of your mind, or you think you you're hearing voices. However you are, broken. yes, broken, yeah. broken into pieces. Like you feel like you're missed me. I felt like I was missed me before. Come to me, come to me, just like that. Because guess what? I I I have a fix for you. I have somebody that can heal you. I have somebody that can restore you. I ha- I'm not trying to preach. I'm just trying to say. I'm letting you go here. <laughs> <laughs> I, caught, I caught myself. Yes, but the phrase come as you are means spiritually. Yes, spiritually. Can we say that again? Spiritually. Yes. It does not mean to dress. In your pajamas, come to church, or come to church in your pajamas. In your pajamas, in your bra, in your. I think it's um, offensive when people think think more of their job, think more of their club, or going to a concert or going out to dinner than they think of coming to the house of the Lord. It's offensive. Yes. You try to go into court dressed any type of way, they won't let you in. Uh, and that 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 is the God of, that is absolutely true. And even some rest of us, you dress a certain way, they will not let you in. They will not let you in. Some stores, there are some very yeah, high some high end stores. stores. If you're not dressed a certain type of way, you they will not. You they will not because I just saw that Bethany Frankel. She was upset. I think she was in Chicago and was trying to go go into the Gucci store or the Louis Vuitton store. One of those high end stores like that. And, and I guess, a and well, I don't know if she's that that wealthy, but yeah, she, she is. Oh, when did she become a billionaire? I didn't know that. I had not heard that. I think it was in the past year or so. But anyway, okay. Anyway, she has, she has enough money to spend in that store. Right. At point. So she had just gotten off her, I guess, her private plane. So she wasn't looking like Bethany Frankel. She was looking like the average Joe. 
And because she was looking like that and dressed like that, they would not allow her in the store. <laughs> and she was upset about that thing. She said that thing to social media, and then she ended up making it into like a, um, I don't know, like when she kept doing different videos. Okay, I am wrong. She's a millionaire. She's not a billionaire. Oh, that's that's what I thought. But it's fine. Uh, I, either way, she has enough money that she could go to that store and shop in the store. Right, shop. Exactly. Um, and so she was really upset about it um, because of – now, then the next day she went she went looking like Bethany Frankel. They had no problem. Let her right in. And I think one time she sent her, her, her assistant. They let the assistant in. So she was really offended by it. But people had to realize some people have rules. Some people have, um, what's the other word? I can't think of the word. Um, regulations? Not regulations. No, it's not regulations. They have, a, um, it's not hierarchy. Like, um, oh, like, a, like they, yes, like certain standards. Some, some places have high standards. And everything is not discrimination. We always think everything no. is discrimination. Everything is not discrimination. And it's just not. And it doesn't matter your race, gender, background, whatever. If I tell you to do this job or to go into this building or to go into this situation, you have to have X, Y, and Z. What do they even have at McDonald's? And Wawa, McDonald's and Wawa, if you don't know what they are, Wawa is a convenience store. You can go in and get chips, soda, sandwich, whatever. The people that work there have a uniform. Absolutely. And not only that, I just saw on, I'm quite sure you saw this on um, on social media too, Brody. Maybe it, it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, this young lady went looking for a job. And she yeah. saw, and she has short, and, and she has short form. No, they were not denim shorts. No, they were not booty cutter shorts. They were um, what she considered. They were too short for what she was num- That was number one. First of all, it was just the fact that they were short, period. But because she thought they were dress shorts and, and they were above her knee, and she thought because they she had. Were, they were halfway the They absolutely were. And she thought because she had on a cardigan shirt and another nice shirt underneath that she looked okay. And they turned her around. But they didn't, they were nice enough not to just turn her around. They gave her the option to be able to go home, reclothe herself, and to come back for the interview. Yeah, see, I didn't know that part. I didn't know they told her she could come back. Yes, they told her she could come back. My thing is, what makes you think I, I, In this generation of, the, I would say the last 20, 25 years, you have so many parents saying, I was spanked as a child. I was, I, I, maybe I feel like I was punished too much as a child. Maybe I feel like the teacher yelled at me too much. Maybe I felt like my parents didn't take my side in an argument. So now, when I have a child, I'm going to let them basically do whatever they want. And we have learned in these past 20 years that that is a bad idea because you're setting your children and your future generations up to fail. Absolutely. Because everyone does not love you. Everyone is not going to agree with you. And sometimes when they're not agreeing with you, I know it might come as a shock to some of our guests. What I was saying, I'm sorry about that, is younger listeners, I know it might come as a shock to you, but there are times when you actually could be wrong. There is no one other than Jesus who has walked this earth that has never been wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. And somebody saying, hey, I don't think what you did or said or presented to the group is right. It does not mean that they hate you. Absolutely. When they I was just be saying, hey, maybe you should think about this another way. But y'all are so geared to hearing I'm right and everyone else is wrong that you refuse to even give any listening, voice, listening ear rather to another person's thoughts. Absolutely. When I when I open my boutique. I'm going to have high standards. I, can, I, 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 when I first um, moved to the States, my first job was at Commerce Bank. Before it was TD Bank, it used to be called Commerce Bank. And what we used to have to do was we had to wow the customer. So 
Um, through that, I've really learned about customer service skills. And what I don't feel like I'm wild as a customer, it really offends me, to be honest with you. Like, to be honest with you, especially when you go in the stores, like, even I, I recognize somebody like, well, why do you think somebody in these stores going to do that? Listen, if you don't like your job, trust me, there's a whole lot of people out there will, that will love to trade places with you. I just, when I used to work, I used to tell people that all the time. You don't like being here? Quit. Quit. It's as simple as that. Quit. It's not always that easy. But it, may, it, may, it may not be, it may, it may not be that easy, but if you want to come to work complaining all the time, if you want to come to work always sowing discord amongst the coworkers, do everybody a favor and just quit and try to find, a, find employment elsewhere where you're going to be happy. I know it's not easy getting a, a job. I, I live in the real world. I understand that. However, I like to let people know there's a whole lot of people out there that would love to um, trade places with you, that would love to be in the position that you're in, that would love to get the paycheck that you're receiving right now. And that, that, that is true, but it's not always that easy. I had an employer not that even long ago that the man wasn't safe. There's no nice way to say it. The man was absolutely crazy. And I know people don't like to say the word crazy right. anymore, but he was crazy. And I was like, I'm out. Most jobs that I've had in my life, I've tried to stick it out, but there was no sticking it out. But see, that's my, that's my point. What did you do? You quit. That's what you did. You quit. Because you realized. I didn't want to because I needed the money. But you but realized. I quit. I, was crazy. I, I, now, leaving the job because somebody is mentally insane is different than going in there with a bad attitude. And that's what I'm referring to. That That's what I'm referring to. That's the part that I'm talking about people that just have a nasty attitude, that don't want to be there, complain about everything. You know, we all know those people who complain about everything and don't never want to do their job to the fullest. They only want to do it 25 to maybe 50%, but still want to always get their paycheck. They they want everybody else to do the work. Those are people I'm talking about. And so for me, when I open my boutique, I'm going to have standards. I'm honestly going to have standards. I'm going to have a dress code. I'm going to have those standards. I'm going to have a dress code. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm going to have a Christian boutique. Obviously, I'm not going to have any profanity. Obviously, I'm not going to. I don't want anyone coming to to work under the influence of anything, especially anything illegal. Now, I understand there's some people that, you know, due to medical reasons, they may need to do certain things. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not blind to that either. But, but I, I'm going to have standards. And if you want to work for me, either you're going to adhere to my standards or you're not. You're going to be like, I turn. No, I'm not going to be like, I, no, absolutely not. I, no. No, no, what, what I mean, it was meant to be a joke. No, I, but I, I get it. I, I'm, I get well. I understand I turn was very um, structured in the way that his musicians, his singers, his dancers, they had to dress a certain way. They had to act a certain way. And if they didn't, he'd find them. Well, I wouldn't be that hard. I want I want people to be fun. I want it to be fun. I want people to have a good time. I want people to be excited about coming to work. But I want people to also know. Listen, this is my livelihood. Just like it's your livelihood, this is my livelihood. This is my purpose. This is my ministry. Because everything I do deals with God. So yes, and I just missed the ice turner for anybody who's like, how could she say it? It was just a joke. Well, I, I didn't even take, you know, I I, think, I, you know, I didn't take it like that. But so for everyone out there that's in ministry, I want to let you know you're doing a good job. Just in case if no one ever tells you, you're doing a good job. And for, yeah. those, and for those of you who may not be doing a good job, you know who you are too. Get it together. Get it together. Because guess what? At the end of the day, regardless of what ministry we are in, we all have to stand before God for ourselves and give an account. So we, mm-hmm. so we at the at the end of the day, 
Rhodey is not going to be there as my t- co-host. <laughs> no. I'm going to be standing nor before I, the Lord. Nor, nor is she going to be there for me. Absolutely. Neither is your mama. Your daddy, yep, and guess what? It doesn't matter how anointed your mama, your daddy, or your grandmama is. That has no bearing on you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing whatsoever. Not at all. I don't care if you're a pastor, let's say you went to a Christian camp growing up, whatever the case may be, you are going to be there absolutely alone. Absolutely alone. So you can't double talk Jesus. You absolutely cannot. You cannot. So, as we go to close this episode, we just want to thank everybody for what you do for the kingdom of God, whether it's big or small, whether it's cleaning the bathroom, cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the 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 um the vest the the sanctuary, the vestibule, whether it's cleaning the the office or the classroom. You know, some people have a lot of um, different things in their churches. Whatever it is that you do. For the kingdom of God, whether it's teaching the babies, teaching the seniors, whatever it is that you do, thank you, thank you. No you good. May not ever get a thank you from the people you're actually helping. But Absolutely, you're going to get a thank you from us. And God sees it. It's not going unnoticed, but with God, that's the most thing I want everybody to know. No matter what you're doing, regardless of whether you don't ever get that pat on the back. Remember why you're doing it and who you're doing it for, and that he sees it. He sees it. He sees it. And just know that. And, and you know, be encouraged in that, that God sees it, and God knows all things, and, you know, it is what it is. It just keeps going forth. We understand. Trust me. We understand. We have done ministry. I've done ministry. She's done things without a thank you. I've done things without a thank you. But we thank you, and we thank you, and we thank you, and yes. we especially thank you for listening yes. to Dr. Average Church Girl Podcast okay. with yes. me. Yes, yes, We want to thank you for sharing. We want to thank you for liking. Yes. We want to thank you for telling your friends. And for downloading, like, and subscribing, we see you. Thank you, like, for real, thank you. Thank you. This will be a waste of time if it had not been for all of you guys. So thank you. We truly appreciate it. And ministry appreciation ones, we appreciate you. Yes. We thank you, and we love you. Yes, we love you. And if you heard any interruptions, anything, please know that we're trying. We're trying our best. We're trying our best. It's been a long Day in a long couple of weeks. Yes, it, it has. Like every time we go to record, something happens. Something, ha- but something thank happens. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Yes, and we appreciate you. And until next time, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. See you soon. Bye.